Volume 5, Episode 1, Welcome to Haven, Review. Alright, so, we finally get to see what Mitchell looks like. And it's kind of exciting because this is the first time that we actually get to see what a another kingdom looks like. Mishro can't wait to see the rest of it. It has like this Asian theme to it. And of course we already know that it's located in the mountains and such. But yeah, finally make it to Mishro after my guess are 13 episodes. We finally make it to Haven. And yeah. Now, when Crow and Ranger get to Haven, it's completely empty, which to Team Ranger, it's not that big of a deal. To, to Crow, he knows that something's up, so. Yeah, he's kind of I I I the I guess preparing for the verse. But it just turns out that Lionheart was um just he honestly do this lost track of time. Although it did seem like something was on his mind when he looked like at his watch thingy but yeah but during the whole lion heart meeting we find out a couple of things about the maidens which is one each maiden gets well basically each maiden gets their own relic and only they can open those those um relics and we also find out no actually we this is not even us finding out this is just confirming that the spring maiden is with raven which we kind of already knew because they Gave us that hint back at um, Volume Four, Episode Four, I think. So yeah, it's this is just confirming it. Um, Crow, he knows where Raven's camp is, so he basically just wants to go out there now before something else happens. Lionheart, however, he. Basically, he wants to take his time. He wants to plan things out. Because in a way, he's... Basically, in a way, he's right. Like, you only get one shot at this. And yeah. So, I can definitely see how Lionheart is based off of the Cow and Lion. But at the same time, I can't really, I can't be mad at, at the guy. Alright, I mean, we find out that basically when the events of Volume 3, like the last couple of, of um, episodes, it did not just affect Beacon. Alright. And after Lionheart said that, like, you guys were not the only, you, blah, you guys were not just the only kingdoms that, like I said, suffered that night. I want to see, like, a, um, basically a flashback of the other kingdoms during, like, the volume three final episodes of, um, something but yeah like I said I I can't really blame Lionheart for siding with Salem and here's why okay look Mishro I think if it's I think they said it's something about 
it being the largest kingdom out there. So you have that, and that's probably troublesome. Then of course you have to worry about a a possible uh, a possible threat of a incoming grim invasion. Then there's also the prospect of of basically a war coming on thanks to the um Mistro government officials and the Atlas reps not really being on the best terms. So if you have like all of that that's combined on your um plate and this person with like immense power offers to help you and in your mind you're trying to basically do what's best for your people or what you think is best for, is best for your people you're kind of gonna say yes and I think that's what Dianhart did but he's not going to stay with Salem for long like I do believe that he is going back to well Osman. Oh uh, yeah. What was I going with this? Oh yeah, like I said, um so Lionheart he has like a lot on it. He has like a lot of weight on his shoulders, so like I said, I can understand why for right now he is from Salem. He's he he's not a bad guy. He's just kind of stuck in like a fucked up place right now. So yeah, um, Crow wants to do this right now. Lionheart and his mind, he's like, I want to basically convince the council, get everything set up, get some hunters, and you know, this basically have a plan. So basically, the whole Lionheart meeting it's a well it's a bust after the meeting like once crow and then leave he finds out that watts was um that he was um listening in oh we find out that crow and raven on equal footing according to lionheart and i think there's something else that oh yeah i kind of want to know like when um Crow basically pulled up the map on his scroll. I wonder does Lionheart also have the coordinates because it seems like he typed in something, but maybe that was just to close the um map or something. I don't know. This seems like maybe he might have the coordinates now. And maybe he'll probably give them to Watts. So, yeah. Anyway, the Lionheart meeting, it is a complete bust, if you will. Crow, of course, wants to get a drink now. And while Ruby and the others just go back to their hotel room. And it's basically here where we find out that the end credit scene of Vine 4 happens. Excuse me. So it turns out that Crow meets Oscar after Lionheart. And it's here where Crow plays a prank on Ruby and the gang. Where, you know, uh, Oscar is just basically bringing back a drunken Crow. So, yeah. But it's also here that Team Ranger finds out that Oscar is Ozpan. Anyway, basically only Oz is going to be the main one who is going to ask Ruby about her eyes. Okay, so that's it. Oh, Drunken Crow or oh, Drunk Crow. The, okay, Drunk, blah. Drunken Crow was like the best thing that 
happened throughout this entire episode. Like, the way he acted after he brought Oscar Ives to um, Team Ranger, it kind of reminded me of like a Rick moment. I've and like um, Rick and Morty, but yeah, that was, that was like Crow just made that scene. All right, so next up is Rice Hoof. It's still on the cargo airship. And Betsy yeah, still on the um, airship, cargo airship. Um, let's see now. It seems like they're almost at their destination. Of course, there's trouble when we find out that another airship is basically getting attacked by Grim. And of course, Rice, he wants to go out and help the, the, the pilot. Ooh, I can kind of understand why he said no. It's like it's only a cargo airship. It's not. It it's not something that's meant for um fights. So yeah, uh, that's basically what we see of Vice doing this. Uh, let's see now. Blake, she is still in. And um, menagerie. Nothing really important happened, said Sep. I mean, Sun and Girl. They have like some type of agreement on something, but that's not really all that important. Like, th the main thing that happens here is that basically Blake and Ilya have to have a talk. Who I think may leave the White Fang. Maybe not in Volume 5. Maybe sometime in 6. I don't know. But yeah. It, it, I think she might just actually leave it. And join up with. Um, basically. Like you know. But yeah. But they have like this talk about. Ilya. Basically wanting Blake to leave. Of course, Blake backs down. Ilya already knows this. She says she knows this, and like, and there's like a basically a hint of sadness in, in her voice. I kind of want to know what their relationship was like back when they was both in the White Fang. I mean, we see a glimpse of that, in like the character short. Well, yeah. But still, so I like maybe any like maybe this an episode of what like base an episode of like what Ilya's and Blake's relationship was like back in the right thing. I I'll be kind of uh, I will be kind of interested in seeing that. So finally, we have Yang who yeah out of all of the season 4, season 5 new outfit Yang I, it, it's my favorite one her outfit looks awesome, her um new arm, her robotic arm, that looks really cool so yeah uh, let's see, Yang is basically just taking a pit stop at a gas station and it's here where we find out that she's basically being hit on by a bandit jerk. And they kind of play a little joke. Um, like, it's basically like a three little bears joke. We all know that, um, Yang is based off of Goldilocks. And so the joke is, he's not too bulky, he's not too thick, he's just right, so... That was kind of cheesy, but at the same time, kind of funny. Anyway, after being hit on by the jerk for like, I'm guessing the 100th 
time of the day now, Yang just basically punches him. I mean, her eyes stay, her eyes stay turned red, which means that yes, he is kind of upset at, at the situation. But notice how she didn't put her sunglasses on. It's like sunglasses on means that she will have not been in control of the um of the um situation but with sunglasses off I think that means that she's kind of learning to control her temper a, a bit better also one other thing to know is that after she got done punching him after that somewhat funny um bouncing when Yang grabs her water bottle I think it's a normal hand that kind of shakes so maybe like I said she's learning how to not depend on quote unquote a temper tantrum like basically maybe what Tai Yang said to her before she left out it's still on her mind oh anyway we find out that Jack Bandit, it seems like he works for Raven. And I'm saying that because I'm pretty sure he overheard Yang and the manager talking about how Yang is looking for someone. And according to the, um, basically, according to the manager, only thing really out this far is basically bandits and ravens tribe is like I guess the biggest there is so yeah it so yeah it turns out that um not turns out but it's pretty much is heavily Im um implied that he's going to be the one who takes Yang to Raven and that was the end of the episode I'm pretty sure it's something that I am missing right now, but I think I got basically the main things covered. Okay, so thoughts on the episode. It was a good setup. We find out like a couple of key things, mostly about the maidens and where I think where most of Team Ruby might meet up at. Alright, so the Maidens, we find out more about the Maidens and the connection to the Relics. And we also find out that one of the Relics is at Haven, so does that mean that the other Relics are at the other um, schools, basically? Find out that, well, like I said, we don't find out, this is this basically them confirming that that um spring is with raven okay um let's see now oh i'm pretty sure that at least yang and raven will basically reunite at raven's bandit cap i mean Ruby and the rest of them, they have to go to Raven's camp. Yang is probably on her way to the camp. So I think there that's where they will probably end up meeting. Blake, I don't really see her meeting up with any of them anytime soon. Because she has like that whole white fang to take care of. Vice, she's definitely going to meet Yang and will be somewhere probably at Haven or Mitchell or something. So yeah, that was the ep no, so yeah, that was But yeah, that was my episode recapping thoughts on Will be Volume 5 Welcome to Haven. Um let's see for the Ruby reviews I'm not going to do them until after Booster Teeth uploads the um, episodes onto YouTube. 
Alright. But anyway, like, comment, and and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. Um, peace and love you guys. Leap Earth out.